we really want to be part of their business and help them grow their business and consult with them on how to use our financing product to maximize their business. Hey, Ambitious Dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Vanhorn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. Ever run into this problem? Patient comes into your office with a major toothache. Within minutes, you know they need a procedure done. Problem is, the procedure is a bit on the expensive side. You explain the situation to your patient, patient agrees, they want the treatment, they need the treatment, but they simply can't afford the cost. So, they ask you to do the minimal amount of work to make the pain go away, and of course, within a few months, they'll be right back there, sitting in the chair, right where they started. So the truth of the matter is, as a dentist, you provide services that can change a patient's life, but that doesn't always come cheap. Fortunately, there are some alternatives out there today that allow you to provide the care you recommend while not forcing the patient into financial ruin. How? By providing quality patient financing. The key word there is quality. Now, there are some bad apples in the financial space who offer these predatory interest rates, but with today's technology and information at hand, there are options and services that aim to create win-win situations for all of those involved. The lenders can make money, you generate more revenue for the practice, and the patient gets the service they deserve at a rate they can afford. So, today's guests are Brad Baylor and Dave Rohr of Proceed Finance, and they have both a very interesting background, and I think you'll find the review of patient financing interesting, even if you don't plan to offer patient financing in your practice. So here are a few things you'll learn. Why quality patient financing can create additional revenue for you and your practice and help your patients afford the care they need. Brad and Dave's risk shared model and why they believe it's changing the world of dental financing. How to decide if patient financing is right for your practice. Common misconceptions of patient financing as well as the pros and cons and much, much more. So now, Here's my interview with Brad Baylor and Dave Rohr of Proceed Finance. Hello, ambitious dentists. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I feel like there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace about. I feel like that there's a lot of docs that don't really know what options are available. And at the same time, there's a lot of new opportunity arising inside of this arena. Today, we're talking about financing treatment for your patients. I know a lot of people, whenever they hear that, they may have heard things like, um, you know, you should stay out of it. You shouldn't, you know, even act as a bridge to a bank, to people trying to get your treatment. But to me personally, the more I talk to people, the more I realize that it's really an access to care type question. If your patient needs access to care, a lot of the times the barrier is their money. And so it, is a really great opportunity for the doctor to be able to provide available options for that patient to be able to receive that treatment by means of financing that service. And so today I'm really happy to talk to you talk to you guys today with Mr. Dave Rohr and Brad Baylor. Dave and Brad are uh, in they they have they're in a company called Proceed Finance. Dave is the CEO, and he actually has uh, probably the coolest background of any guest of the last ninety some odd episodes. At least to me personally, he is a he he was a, a partner in a very large CPA firm called Grant Thornton, uh, which uh, all of the other CPAs that listen into this uh, podcast, uh, I'm sure they 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 uh, are giggling with glee and excitement just like I am uh, to be able to have a kindred spirit on the podcast. Uh, he was with Grant Thornton and he utilized his CPA and master's of taxation credentials to help public accounting business practice, contributing to the revenue growth of that practice of over $150 million and expansion into nearly 70 countries worldwide. So he is a, 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 we could probably talk for many hours and put many dentists to sleep about a lot of different tax issues, but we won't do that today. We're going to talk about something even cooler. 
Uh, and we also have Brad, who is the Senior Director of Sales at Proceed Finance. And uh, I've been talking with both of them recently, and they're both really passionate about this company that they've created uh, that is serving as one of these options to be able to go out there and give access to care for your patients to get those big cases and uh, be able to help out more people. So Dave and Brad, thank you so much for coming on today. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. So Dave and Brad, you know, uh, every time I talk to people about um, businesses or people that help dentists, I like to really ask about how how things came about. How did you get to the place where we're, you're, you're going to be helping dentists and service medical providers, uh, you know, help those patients finance the, the, the services and such like that. How did, how did you get into this place? Sure. I start with that one. Um, I, I also, uh, after I left my CPA career and, and consider myself a, a recovering C, CPA, I, I went into a, a business and, and had the opportunity to work for Cabela's and started their uh, credit card bank, uh, and, uh, have been in the banking business, you know, uh, probably now 30 years off and on in different roles, but got real familiar with unsecured credit. Uh, we had a very large portfolio um, and understand the whole world of unsecured financing. Uh, and, and one of the things you know I, I observed is as the uh, the the healthcare markets uh, uh, needed financing for patients. You know how do people pay for this and what type of financing? is available for this. And I think it's a growing need that's just gonna get bigger. Uh, so uh, I started researching this. I, I retired from uh, the world's foremost bank, which was Cabello's bank, and uh, <clears throat> started uh, doing research and different things, but found a group of partners. And uh, what we're doing is we're trying to be uh, a brand new concept in patient financing. I've studied this for, for years, it's taken me well over two years to put this together in terms of this. We are a funded model, so our providers get paid uh, usually two business days after a patient uh, agrees to the, the financing. Uh, so it's not an unfunded model. I looked at that where that would be where your, your uh, uh, patient receivables are on the books of the, the provider and they're actually financing uh, the, the patients and there's models out there that try to help guide people through who's credit worthy and all of that. That's not us. So we're, we're a funded model. So, so there's a lot of things that, that are pieces that had to make this work, but I'm just kind of passionate about this area in healthcare. I've worked a lot with a lot of healthcare providers and professionals, and um, this is an area of need and it's just growing and getting bigger and more and more people uh, are going to need access to uh, what I'm going to call quality patient financing. So that's how I got involved in this. And, and uh, it, you know, it, it's an exciting area. Absolutely. So, um, and yeah, I didn't even mention that in the, uh, the intro, but you're also CFO of Cabela's, which is a pretty big deal. So, uh, we could also talk a lot about KPIs and you know, what makes companies profitable and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, okay. So you, you, you're in this world, you have proceed finance and you're helping out doctors and things like that. Why should dentists be concerned about, uh, their patients being able to afford treatment and the different options that are available to them? Sure. I can start off and then I'll, I'll pass it on, on to Brad. You know, dentistry is an industry where insurance is minimal in terms of uh, what coverage uh, patients get and what's available and what's provided to them by employers. Uh, and that coverage is continuing to shrink because I think a lot of employers are moving the money they invested in dental coverage into, into uh, health, uh, into basic health just from affordability. So uh, what you see is when dental procedures get expensive uh, and more and more dentists want to do more expensive procedures to help their, their patients, um, that it's all uninsured. So it, it's the patient needs the procedure patient wants the procedure, but the patient has to figure out a way to pay for the procedure. So, uh, especially in dentistry, you know, uh, because of the uninsured uh, markets that, that a lot of the providers deal with is uh, they've got to have a way uh, and a decent financing plan. So patients can say yes, when they want to treat the patient, the patient needs and wants the treatment, but money is the problem. So that's kind of uh, what we're all about. And Brad, you want to you know, we, we'll get into the products and kind of how we're doing this differently, but 
uh, that, that's that's what I see as a huge need, and especially when you get into the expensive dental implant markets, cosmetic dentistry, or the things that for providers, you know, big cases, uh, you know, you get anywhere from you know five to fifty thousand dollar type cases. Uh, uh, they're going to have to have a financing option that's viable for their patients, or, or they're not going to do them. Patients just are going to say no, or all sorts of things are going to happen, or they can't get the money. Well, and just to, to take it a step further, <clears throat> um, in today's financing world with providers, there are uh, limited options. And most of those options that are available both to providers and to patients um, favor neither. They favor the lender. And that was one of the things that was a motivating factor for um, creating proceed finance and towards the, the mantra that we have here. And that is, we believe that patient financing should be fair to the provider. It should be fair to the patient and it should be fair to the lender. Um, right now, we don't see the landscape having any solutions that are out there that treat everybody um, to where it's a win-win-win situation. And so that's what we're out here to do is uh, take care of providers, let them offer a product that takes care of their patients, um, and we're the vehicle to do it. So you mentioned some of the other people that are in the market. For people, that, you know, assuming someone doesn't know what it is that the, the other providers do, explain to us what the you feel like the flaws are in that system more specifically and you know we can we, we can we can say that the two that i know of are care credit and lending club can you explain to us kind of what you feel like the flaws in in, in those models are and and how proceed finance uh can can help people out sure um you know obviously we're aware of all our competitors and you mentioned two that are, are are you know probably the largest names in the space uh care credit is a credit card uh, it is funded by a bank. It's a large bank, and uh, it's mainly used by a lot of providers as an acceptance vehicle, like a merchant, where you have your care. You know, your patient. You go to Care Credit. They give you a credit line that's usable at probably two hundred thousand providers, and it's like a Visa Mastercard. You go there, and it's an acceptance thing. Uh, they specifically are designed for patients. Or, or for customers who, who are looking for a medical card. So they can take their medical card, they're given a line of credit, just like a credit card, and they take it in, and that, that's how they pay for their procedures. Uh, Lending Club is a little bit different. Uh, they're not a credit card. They're probably closer to what we do. Uh, we are not a credit card. We are a term lender. In other words, we make term loans to patients. Uh, we uh, then, pay the provider. The term loans go anywhere from 24 months to 96 months and credit worthiness is uh, you know part of the, the scale but we, we go out longer than anybody else. We, we have interest rates that are very fair that are below all of our competitors and uh, we go deeper with credit. Now how do we do that? Um, we have a shared risk model. This does not exist in the marketplace today and this is really I think distinguishes from from other providers today's market what you're going to see is okay you know in a perfect world okay the patient uh, or let's start with the provider the provider wants to pay no discount fees and wants us to prove everybody you know that's a perfect world sure okay? you know the the patient in a perfect world doesn't want to pay any interest and wants the lowest possible payment possible and then wants friendly customer service and you know somebody to take care of them Okay, the lender in a perfect world, well, we don't want any bad loans. Uh, we want everybody to pay us back and we got to make some money on, on a, a margin because mm -hmm. you know, the funds are X and we loan it out at X. Uh, we're business. We're business. So, you know, how do you balance that perfect world? Because nobody's going to get what they want in that model. The reality is, is people don't, you know, there's bad credit. We, we are an unsecured lender. So the loans we make to people are not secured. Uh, by any collateral uh, that actually for providers, and this is an important point, expands their purchasing power for the patient. So in other words, we give them uh, purchasing power because it's an unsecured credit and they don't have to use any of their current assets to, to back up this <clears throat> loan. So sure. that, that's a great thing. Uh, but 
what we do is we balance that risk. Okay. And this is kind of what makes us unique is, is a risk shared model. So the, to, for an, us to enable patients to get lower payments and longer terms, uh, we take credit risk and we take interest rate risk, but uh, we, we, we have that risk. We uh, have providers who want to have patients that say yes, because they can afford this now. So a $10,000 procedure for $129 a month, you know, people are going to say, I can make that work when you present it in that fashion. And uh, we're not giving, you know, we're not predatory in terms of interest rates. Our rates basically uh, end where others start. And it's a fair rate. And, you know, we treat, we try to make this where patients are treated with dignity and are not thrown into the world of high interest rates and, you know, penalties, fees, all that sort of thing. We, we have none of that. And then we take the risk and share that with the provider and patient and, and balance it. So uh, that model doesn't exist. So, so we take on credit that others won't, but for us to do that, our provider discount is higher. That's a shared risk model. But if it's a lower, if it's a lower credit score, it's a more of a risk. And so we all share in that risk, right? The provider shares in it because they're going to pay more of a discount, but these mm -hmm. are for people that would otherwise not be approved for treatment to begin with. So yes, they're going to pay more out of their pocket to be able to treat the patient, but these are patients then that they're now treating that they wouldn't have otherwise. So this is incremental revenue that they're right. getting um, for the provider that they wouldn't have otherwise. Right. That's, that's the beauty of this is because uh, we're going to enable to create incremental revenue for providers where the person that needs, you know, a $10,000 treatment plan, start to finish, can't afford it, doesn't have the money, needs a payment plan. Well, traditional model is the patient will say, well, just get me out of the office because, you know, my teeth hurt. And, and, mm -hmm. and but you're going to be back in six months and I can't complete your treatment plan is what you really need. So they'll, they'll pay, you know, what, what they have today to pay. Well, now the, the provider can say, look, this is what, if, if we're going to take care of you the way you need to be taken care of and provide the permanent solution for your problem, you know, it's going to cost $10,000. Can you afford, you know, a hundred dollars or 129 a month or whatever the payment is based on us being able to stretch this out over 96 months? Uh, patients are going to look at that and say, you know, let's get it done right. And, and that's the right answer and that's the right solution. That's what everybody wants and needs. So, you, you know, know, Jonathan, one of the things that uh, uh, in my discussions with a, a variety of providers is that what they hear from their patients in going forward with treatment is, what is my monthly payment going to be? I, I don't have $10,000 in my pocket, but I've got 175 a month that I can pay without breaking the bank. You know, you asked a little bit earlier about, you know, some of the things that we're trying to solve for. What, what are the problems that we see out there? Um, you know, quite honestly, the patient financing in America right now is broken. Um, you know, all the current lending solutions, again, primarily benefit the lender. And, um, you know, the providers and the borrowers are the ones that are suffering. Um, a patient might go through with a treatment plan accepting a payment in a high interest rate that they really can't afford. And what happens is either they default on the loan and that doesn't do anybody any good. Um, it looks bad on the provider because the patient is not thinking that it's the lender that who's the bad guy. It's the, it's their provider who turned them on to a particular program. They should have never been forced to get into. Um, and then there, there's uh, the, the treatment then will stop as well. So there are a variety of things here that because our interest rates stop at 15.99%. And again, as Dave just alluded, that's where others in, in our space, that's where their interest rates begin. Sure. Um, Those other ones that they take long, they, they take more the longer that it is and everybody pays the same same rate. They exactly. stop, even, no doesn't matter which credit is, right? That's yeah. right, exactly. You know, and, and sometimes it depends on, well, how much am I gonna loan you? Dep is depending on, you know, what, what that interest rate is as well. So. What we are trying to do is say, let's approve more people with fair interest rates and charge the provider a fee that is reasonable. Right now, providers from our competitors are getting charged fees regardless of the credit rating 
of the borrower. So I could have excellent credit or I could have the lowest credit that we accept and for our competitors, that provider is gonna get charged the same amount. Well, the person that's got really good credit is much more likely to pay back that loan than somebody who is more risky. So sure. why, should they, why should they invest that much of their provider fee for that person when it's, it's a safer bet than the other person? So that risk rated discount that we provide to them is based off of the credit of that customer because not all patients are the same. And, and as far as the provider fees go, just to get into that, um, you know, we start at uh, 3.5%, uh, which is less than our competitors for the good credits. You know, that's what Brad was just alluding to is it's risk rated. So if you got good credits, uh, you know, you're not going to pay for that as the, the credits go down in, in terms of, of risk uh, rating, then we'll, we'll charge more to the provider. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, uh, if you average it all out, it's not that much different. And, and you know, when I start and say three and a half percent, what a lot of providers don't realize is somebody comes in and puts it on plastic, Visa, MasterCard, their merchant fee usually is about 3%. So it's almost like cash. If you're accepting, you know, credit cards, that's for the good credit. And then, you know, when we extend these payments and create payment plans that are extremely affordable, that, that's, that creates risk. And so we share in that. Uh, and, it just makes sense uh, that, that that model exists. That, that's that's what uh, uh, in banking the regulators want to see in in the world is to you know risk rate it that the the people that are, are uh, higher risk you know should pay more, but don't overcharge people that uh, people that that are uh, uh, you know good credits and, and mm -hmm. less of a risk. The, the, the story I like to tell a lot of people whenever I start talking about, you know, monthly payments and things like that is, and guys that are listening to this right now, you know, you may be thinking, okay, well, how can I use this in my practice? What is the benefit? Why, why should I focus on this? Should it be a focus? There's probably a lot of things going on in your head right now. To me, like I said, this is a way to, like, and what you guys have said as well, this is a way to, to lower the barrier to be able to get an, a yes to a treatment plan acceptance. Uh, I've always said on the podcast that whenever I look at dental practices, whenever I look at the most profitable practices that are out there, the most profitable practices have the most cases that they are doing. The most profitable things coming out of dental practices are the dental cases. You know, yes, hygiene can be can be profitable to some some clip, but not near as profitable as a very strong, really capable dentist that is getting a lot of yeses to a lot of big cases over and over and over again. Those are the most profitable things that occur inside of dental practices. And so, yes, most of those those cases have high dollar price tags on them. And literally one day when I was I was out and about, I I I, I kept getting these advertisements thrown at me. I kept thinking about it and I finally realized why people were doing this and I'm going to talk about when I bought a used car. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a thrifty, uh, young CPA. And so I, I buy used cars and don't buy new ones because I don't want the value to depreciate it immediately right after I buy it. Uh, and the only thing that I pay for is safety for my family basically. And getting me from point A to B, you know, I live six miles from my, from my house. I drive back and forth every day. Don't do a lot of traveling outside of that. Well, whenever I went to buy my vehicle, uh, they kept talking to me about, my what what the uh, uh the payment was going to be i kept saying i don't really care about the payment because i'm going to pay it off in you know 12 months so i don't really care what the payments are going to be yet the salesperson was completely trained to not even talk about what the price was all he wanted to say was it's going to be 450 dollars a month or it's going to be 600 dollars a month or it's going to be 300 a month or it's going to be 200 a month and the reason is because the majority of people that are out there that is how they feel. That is how they think. They don't have large cash reserves just sitting around waiting to be spent on big items such as medical expenses, especially things that could be going on in their, in their oral health. So they don't have the cash reserves. The vast majority of America doesn't have cash reserves. And so, and the, the car people have figured this out. So they don't talk about that. You know, I get a letter probably every week saying, hey, bring your car in and we'll give you a new one for less payments than you're currently making. I guess they don't realize I don't have any payments on my cars, but the 
thing is, is they're doing that because psychologically people don't think about things in big chunks of money most of the time. Most people, the people that are listening to this right now, the people that are in this conversation right now, we might think of that in some terms, but most people think in terms of what do they have available to be able to pay their payments for every month. And like, you know, Dave said, a $10,000 case and get financed for 130 bucks a month, 129 bucks a month for eight years. I mean, that's like eating out two times for a family of five, like over the I mean, at a tier above McDonald's of, uh, of restaurants that they could pull back on in order to fix someone's oral health. It could do a lot of good for their lives. So that's a big, big deal. Uh, I know practices that they literally, every time they have a big case, they, they know that this is going to be an issue because they know the patient and they literally come up and they say, here's the case. Here's what we're doing. Here are three options we have available for you to be able to uh, afford the service. And like maybe one will be a, a low, you know, a smaller, bigger payments. One might be a full payment today with a, a smaller percentage, like a, a cash discount. And one might be a longer term piece where it's a longer, you know, longer term where they can do like a, a lower monthly payment. And they use uh, a finding they'll, they'll use, you know, they're in either they, either they finance it internally or they use somebody like proceed finance to be able to give them an idea of what it's going to be beforehand. Now, I don't know what the process is with you guys uh, as far as how they would apply and be approved, but do you guys do like a pre-approval or anything like that before they come in? Or do you wait until you have a case set up or how does that work? You want to take that one, Brad? So, <clears throat> yeah, sure. So our product is an online application. So okay. the, uh, they'll go through, the patient will go through their consultation. Um, they'll be, you know, obviously um, told what the treatment plan is or what, what the recommendation is. Um, it may be $7,000 when it's all said and done. Um, at that point, the, you know, the treatment coordinator will ask them how they want to pay for it. Um, the conversation will eventually get to, do you have financing? Yes, we offer proceed finance. Um, we can go ahead and fill out the application online right here, right now. Um, we offer instant decisioning. So immediately that patient is gonna know if he's been approved for that full amount or not. Um, and again, that's one of our mantras is, the lower that you get into the FICO score from 700 down to 640, um, our competitors will either just not approve that loan completely or they'll offer um, a counter offer that's a partial of what that full amount is. Well, if I need $7,000 worth of the treatment and you come back and say, we'll give you $2,500, that doesn't help anybody. So one of the things that we are competitive advantage is we offer a full amount approval of $7,000 down to $640 on the, on the credit score. So. At the point that they are approved, they're going to be giving a list of options, anywhere from two years on up to eight years. It's going to be shown exactly what, what the cost of that loan is, what the interest rates are on that. Um, and then at that point, the customer has the opportunity to make a decision. Do they want to go forward with treatment or not? Can they afford those monthly payments? Uh, assuming that they do, the provider right there will certify the loan. The loan papers are then electronically signed by the uh, patient right there in the office. They're scheduled for payment. Two days later, the provider gets the full amount minus the discount of that treatment um, deposited in their bank. So at that point, they're done. Now the repayment risk, that's on us. If it ever goes bad, that's on us. The provider is free and clear. They, they've done their, their, their business. They've gotten paid. Um, so there's no recourse back to them. So uh, that's one of the benefits of a, fund, of a funded model is that they get paid up front for that full treatment. It's not a monthly payment as you go type of thing. They get the full amount and then um, they can go ahead and treat that patient, give them the care that that patient needs and that they want to provide. Um, and again, everybody wins. Absolutely. And so, and so to, to tie that in, what I was saying about the, you know, talking about the used car salesman, talking about these types of things, if the used car salesman used this as a way to get more people to buy used cars, I think we have to look at ourselves, and when I say ourselves, you guys have to look at yourselves, listeners that are dentists, uh, have to look at yourselves and say, you know, is this something that we believe our patients should be receiving as far as treatment goes? And if that answer is yes, 
to me, we should be exploring as many avenues as possible to eliminate the barriers we've been talking about. It's the same thing the used car salesmen are doing. I don't like to put used car salesmen in the same group as the doctors because obviously, uh, you know, we're talking, you know, sales are different than effectively communicating and getting a, a yes from a patient. But it's, it's kind of the same premise of if we're going to be looking at these things, you know, if they do it for used cars, something that it, to me, you know, again, perceived value to me of a used vehicle, other than again, the safety of my family isn't extremely high. Whereas something like my oral health and just my overall well being is something that I value extremely high. So I feel like it's interesting. There's a disparity there. That's something I feel like is not super valuable. People are trying as hard as possible to sell me, but medical providers may not be trying as hard as possible to be able to do what they can to be able to let me be able to have, um, you know, accept as much uh, treatment as possible uh, that I, is coming from my trusted dental person or my de tr trusted dentist. So, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of my whole philosophy on this whole practice financing and, and, and piece like that. So you, you did touch on discounts. We've talked about interest rates. We talked about how, and I really like the fact that as as the patient's credit credit worthiness goes down, their rate goes up rather than it just be everybody gets that top end rate, uh, which I've always found was really strange. I just looked up on care credits and it was like for every like new customer, like the rates like something in the first year or something like 24.9%. And so for you guys listening, I have a feeling the reason that those rates are so high is because like you said, they, it's a credit card. And I believe credit cards can get out of usury laws compared to, to most other uh, secured lines. Uh, so they can charge higher rates as credit cards uh, rather than as, as what most people can do in loans. For example, in the state of Arkansas, our usury laws only allow up to like 18% interest on pretty much anything. Um, and so I'll, I'll be interested in seeing how credit gets away with the 24.9% or whatever it was that whatever I just looked up on their site. So do you want, to pay, you want your patients paying 24.9% or do you want to pay them paying whatever it was 15.9 or something like that you said? Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. Really quick announcement for you. And if you're going to be a dental practice owner, you know you're at some point going to have to get a dental practice loan, whether it's going to be to acquire a dental practice or it's going to be to start a startup dental practice. You're going to have to get a loan. And I'm really proud to say that a company that I've worked with personally dozens of times over the past few years is our first sponsor after 80 episodes of Start Your Dental Practice. And our first sponsor is Bank of America Practice Solutions. So whenever you're going to be getting a new loan, whenever you're going to get a loan for starting your dental practice or acquiring a dental practice, you really want to make sure that you have three things when it comes to that loan. Number one, you want a really great interest rate. Number two, you want to make sure that the company that you're speaking with has uh, a lot of experience and can guide you through the best path to be able to become a practice owner through the loan process. And number three, you want to make sure that the terms associated with that loan are the most advantageous for you. And I'm really happy to say that all three of these things, Bank of America just knocks it out of the park for you. It's really a no-brainer. If you're going to have to get a loan, which you are going to have to do 100%, you may as well go with a company that has a great interest rates, has great experience with the industry, and has the best terms out there in the market today. So if you're currently in the process of shopping loans, 100% give Bank of America Practice Solutions a try. And if you would mention that you came through the SYDP community, it would help out the podcast a lot and also allow us to give back to our very gracious sponsors. Again, this is an advertisement, a paid advertisement. If you go to them, I will, uh, you know, have more advertising revenue come to me. So if you enjoy the podcast, I would appreciate you helping out our sponsors. Uh, and if you are interested in that loan process, just text the word bank loan, one word, B A N K L O A N to three, three, four, four, four. Again, that's bank loan to three, three, four, four, four. And we will reach out to you. Thanks guys. Our, our high, our rates start at 474 mm -hmm. and they go to 1599. That's our highest rate. So we, we, like I said, it, it's a very fair rate. For Lowest credit rating, longest term, 15.99 right. is the highest we'll go. Yep. And, and, uh, you, you know, rates, interest rates in, in the real world are a function of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I take the interest rate risk. 
and then credit worthiness. And, and we, our matrix, you know, when we score a, a patient instantly in, in our model, we'll put them where they deserve, but they get a fair deal and they get a payment, uh, payment options that they get to choose. One of the things I was going to address is, is when you're, you know, you use the analogy, the used car guys. Well, you know, you have all levels of sophistication of, of, of patients in, in, in the world. We allow <clears throat> prepayments. So in your example, what you can tell people is, look, this is financing you're approved for today. Here's their deal. It's fixed unsecured rate. fixed rate lending. Now, if you want to go to your bank or wherever and get a better loan, you know, you're going to probably have to have security or some other uh, function that, that would enable a banker to get you a better loan, but it involves security, go for it and then pay it off. We, we don't care if you prepay us and uh, uh, it doesn't matter if that, that's an option, but we, we try to make it fair, but you know, in unsecured financing, you know, that's on the spot uh, that, that enables somebody to expand their purchasing power and say yes, because yeah, I can make that work regardless. And if I get, you know, I, I got total flexibility in paying this thing off uh, and, and treating, you know, uh, uh, advanced pays or whatever they want to do, you know, we allow them to do it all. So uh, we, we try to accommodate, uh, you know, the, the people that, that are sophisticated in, in, in borrowing money and those that, that really aren't, but need some help. I mean, imagine if you are a patient and you're not familiar with the patient financing and how the small print works and you uh, are late on a payment when you were on a promotional plan and all of a sudden you were paying 0% interest and now because you're one day late, you now have to pay, you know, 24.99% interest rates from the beginning of the loan. It's retroactive to the end of your term of your loan. So when you thought you were just about done because you were late on one payment, now you just incurred two, $3,000 worth of interest rates because of the small print, the gotchas, the things that are out there that really gave us an attitude of, we need somebody that's fair, honest, transparent um, to the consumer, to the provider, um, that you know, off, that that's a different choice for providers to offer, um, and, and that's where we come from. Um, one of the other things, Jonathan, that you had talked about briefly, that I just wanted to mention, getting back to that used car salesman type thing. Um, the strategy, what you're referring to, is something that we consult with our partners on. So not only are we just a, a, a good financing product that that they're uh, that enhances their image that they're going to be proud to offer to their patients, but we work with them to help them grow their business. One of the ways we, we, we talk about that is marketing the low payment that we can offer. So imagine if they have a procedure that they know it costs $6,000, but they also know that um, it could be um, financed over the eight years for $99 a month. To be able to put that in the paper or on the internet or where, whatever medium, the radio, the TV, whatever medium they're on and say, look, we could offer this procedure for $99 a month. That's going to drive incremental revenue, new patients through that provider's door. And all they were doing was utilizing a tool that they have in their office um, through us. And so those are the things that we don't want to just partner with somebody for them to use our product. We really want to be part of their business and help them grow their business and consult with them on how to use our financing product to maximize their business. Absolutely. It's a, it's a really valuable tool to have. There's a lot of, there, there, there are a few no brainers that are out there to me, but having, having a way for patients to finance uh, their, their, your services is, is, is to me is a no brainer. Uh, so you had talked about as far as, as also as credit, credit scores go down and, um, you know, rates go up, the discount also changes. Is that something you publish or, or speak publicly about what, what your discount rates are? Yeah, we will, you know, when we get in with a provider, you know, we'll explain the whole thing, the transparency on, on, on our uh, credit uh, grid module that places all of this. But, you know, our highest discounts uh, for credits that most people would be, you know, they would not get this business. So these are truly incremental cases will be 19 and a half percent. You won't see that a lot, but I mean, those are the ones that, 
you know, I look at it like this and because you, you know, I can explain what the numbers are in terms of how many of these loans are not going to get repaid. But mm -hmm. what they need to know is, um, look, if you have a case and somebody needs the procedure, wants the procedure, and uh, they are a high credit risk, we're willing to finance them. But at the end of the day, you're going to get approximately, you know, in the worst case, 80 and 81 cents on the dollar. I'm just rounding. Was well, that better than getting zero dollars? And what are your real costs of providing that procedure? Well, in dental practices, it's usually 15, 20% direct, mm -hmm. this lab, that sort of thing. So they're still doing really well. And to your point earlier, Jonathan is, you know, and I've seen this too, the most profitable practices and, and dentists are obviously interested in that it, uh, it are the ones that are fully utilized. The, the chairs are full, the, the operations are well, they've got, you know, uh, uh, a full book of patients, uh, a full book of, uh, of future patients and, and appointment schedules booked for the next 60 days and they're, you know, at capacity. You know, those from a financial profitability point are your most profitable practices. Well, the tools to get there, if they're, you know, and they're not utilized 100% is what percent of the market are you missing because you can't, you know, your, your patients don't have the money or they, you know, these types of maybe higher end cases that we want to do, that have the higher margins in them, we can't get our patients to say yes because they can't afford it. Well, now you have an option to make it afford. Imagine going back as a provider into my file cabinet, looking at all the consults that said no because the monthly payment was too high, I can't afford it, but they now can go back to open them up and say, look, we've got a new solution. That monthly payment that we talked about before, it's not $225, it's $175 now. Does that make a difference to you in accepting the treatment? I mean, those are people that they've already consulted, are ready to roll, except for that one last roadblock. Now they've got a solution to get past that too. So they, they've got a, a, a file cabinet full of opportunity right there without having to do anything other than call them back with the new solution that they're offering. Fantastic. One of the, Jonathan, I love this as an accountant. Uh, it is and you've seen a lot of dental practices and, and this will surprise a lot of your listeners is what do you think one of the largest if not the largest asset that they have on the in, in their practice that's not on their books largest asset that is not on their books um i know a lot of consultants would probably say the telephone would probably be what they would say it's their unfunded treatment plans that haven't been funded so how many, the average practice with just a one uh, practitioner, what do you think that number is? If they go back and say, we did not, the patient needed X and it's a $10,000 procedure. They only went for 500 and they need 9,000 more dollars worth of work to really get them where they need to be. And we never performed <clears throat> that work. I would think it'd easily be in the mid six figures for, for the average practice. I mean, just because I know that just on the unscheduled treatment uh, reports for most people that, I mean, there's, I've, I've seen people with, you know, in excess of two, $3 million in unscheduled treatment. So people that have been diagnosed with something, but never came in for the treatment and price is typically the number one factor of why people say no to things. They see the price, they're scared, they don't trust the doctor, they don't think it's important right now, or they don't have the time, or usually like the five big reasons. Yeah. But you're, you're right, it's the average, just a, a, in a small practice is well over a half million dollars. And I've seen, you know, uh, several million dollars of this. And, you know, they, how do they monetize that? I mean, I, we're talking like money mm -hmm. terms. But, but what if they simply went back and said, okay, let's look at who these people are. And, you know, they said no because of the, they just couldn't afford it, didn't want to proceed because uh, whatever reason, but money is usually the first one. Well, now we have an affordable solution. Would you, for if we could, you know, uh, apply with, with, with proceed finance and get you a payment plan that looks like this, we would love to get you treated and, and finish this off. So, it's for your health. It's for, you know, your well-being, and you know, everybody's going to feel good about this. Can you afford to make something like that work? And, and uh, guess how much, what percent of that, that you can monetize in, in that uh, unfunded uh, patient base. It's, you know, good practices will figure that out. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it's another way that, that uh, to, you know, to generate revenue and to keep, keep those, those chairs full. Oh, I'm a I'm hundred percent certain of that. Just because, I mean, just, just thinking through it, I mean, there's so many patients that need that type of help. Uh, and, you know, and speaking to the, the profitability of it, you know, we find that most practices can run at about a 50% overhead. And of that, you know, whenever you're talking about the big cases, you're typically only looking at about, you know, maybe 13, 14% of mm -hmm. that actually being overhead related to that specific procedure. Yep. Uh, and then if you've got a $10,000 case, it takes you half of the day to do, you got to take a 20% haircut because nobody else would lend to this person and there's no other way they could afford it. Then, you know, you're taking, you're making eight grand on half days worth of work. Plus you get an extra, you know, you got the other 13, 14%. So you're at, you know, sixty six hundred dollars is what you're getting in net off of a half day's worth of work, you know, not too bad. Especially if you're in a state that has EFDAs, which uh, just do all the work for you, according to what what I've heard from those docs out there in the states that have really good expanded function dental assistance. Assistance. So, yeah. that, the example, Jonathan, you just gave that, and you're exactly right. You know, the incremental income that they're going to get, most of that falls to the bottom line. But you know, that twenty percent haircut, that's the extreme case. That's oh, yeah. not. Our average discount, if you do the whole risk rate and model for most practices, is going to run somewhere between six to seven percent. Mm -hmm. But they're going to get the three and a half on the good stuff, you know, on the on the excellent credits. Well, we we divide, yeah, we divide, we divide it we into divided into seven different tiers. Our, our our credit ratings on the first four tiers, we charge the provider the same or less for that exact same customer with good or excellent credit than any of our our competitors out there. So we're already letting providers keep more money in their pocket for that same customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then on the other end, like we said, we are, we are charging 19 and a half percent, but these are people that wouldn't get treatment otherwise, and they wouldn't get that incremental revenue otherwise. And it balances out about seven or 8%. And they wouldn't even be able to accept the treatment because the reason that rate's so high is because it's such a long term, which means there's a higher risk of default. And so, yeah. since there's a longer, since it's a longer term, you have lower payments, which is what the person can afford. Otherwise, they would just have to do without the out the treatment. Um, yeah. And so, it's it's kind of that that's the trade off, like we talked about, kind of that triangle, uh, if you will, of, of of the the way it has to be a win for everybody. So yeah, no, I completely get that. Uh, and I think my listeners will too. So, um, you know, so a lot of the interest rates were three, four, four percent, or the, a lot of the the discount rates, I guess, were, were three. Or, where, where was it? Where the discount rates start at? Three and a half percent is is uh, the lowest discount, and that, that's uh, you know for uh, the excellent credits. And like I tell you, to think about that, some people would even balk at that. Well, you you know, compare it to a credit. Yeah. That's a credit card. Yeah. That, no, I don't, I don't think anybody listening is going to raise their eyebrows with that. Uh, actually, I think, I hope that they're, they're all reaching for their, their phones to, 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 to go to proceedfinance.com. It's a proceedfinance.com. I didn't tell people the wrong URL. Pro, yep. Proceed, proceed, finance, yep. Okay. Proceedfinance.com. We'll and go. it's all out there and there's a, a lot of inter interesting information on, on our website that, you know, our tools like payment calculators so they can play around. And I was playing around that like with, with an orthodontist recently. And, uh, you know, that's a different model because most of that, that it, they keep it on their books. And it's kind of a pay as you go treatment plan type uh, model. Mm -hmm. But what if they got money up front and what, how would all that work? Uh, and, and what would, would that change things for the, their, their whole business and their business model? And it's just, it's amazing uh, what you can create, but you can play around with, you know, uh, those types of things. There are a lot of providers that are offering <clears throat> our competitors 0% promotional financing. Um, and, it, you know, somebody's going to pay the interest rate. It's either going to be the customer, the, the patient, or the provider. But, but the lender is going to get their money one way or the other. We have decided that we're going to go out there and, and say, look, there's a different way to do this. What if you could, and, and people that have the 0% financing, oftentimes if it's a $4,000 procedure for two years, they still can't afford $167 a month. Well, what if, could they afford $100 a month if it was extended out to four years? So now it's not so much about the 0%, it's about that monthly payment again, and can I afford it without, without not buying groceries for my family? And at $100 versus 167, 0% or otherwise, now I'm getting that business that I didn't get before. 
Yeah, on a on a four thousand dollar treatment with, I mean, even say five percent interest, I mean, you're looking at what ninety five bucks a month or something like that over a four year period or something. And so, I mean, the people that are listening, you know, what that should be saying to you is things like implants or things like, you know, if it's a little bit yeah. higher of a fee structure, like Invisalign or sedation or sleep apnea or, uh, you know, all, and the list just goes on and on of different things that, you know, you could develop specific packages around uh, being able to offer these services more and increase these specific additional services, like we mentioned before, incremental revenue to be able to add more revenue to the practice to where you're going to be more profitable and be able to take on more money at the end of the day, as well as, you know, the, the main purpose, which is providing access to care to be able to have more people say, yeah. So that, those are fantastic rates. I mean, top, top, top level being, uh, you know, three, the, the three, three some odd percent on being on, on the discount to the dentist and the four and a half percent interest to the patient. I mean, that's, that, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's really a good deal for, for, for everybody. Uh, so, um, in, in closing, you know, what are some of the other things that you guys want to talk about? I mean, is there anything else that we haven't covered that we need to cover as far as, you know, how proceed finance works, the dental practices, as well as what the opportunities are for the dentists out, that are out there or anything like that? Yeah. Well, in, in closing, John, one of the things that we didn't mention that that's important is, is our range of loans, these unsecured patient loans. We start at $2,500 is the lowest amount that, that we'll finance. And we go all the way up to $55,000 unsecured. So we can cover the expensive implant procedures. As some of our, our clients currently are implant specialists. And as we know, that can, you know, uh, especially on, depending on the, the location of the practice, can get to 50000 pretty quick. So uh -huh. we made $55,000 unsecured loans to the people that qualify for that. Uh, you know, and they the, gave them a great affordable payment plan. So in those really high end cases like implants, you know, we can make this work and get the patient because uh, we're the, perfect for that business. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we uh, uh, so, so we're not just small loans, we're term loans, 2,500 to 55,000 and uh, with, with uh, eight year repayments uh, and, and uh, it's risk, like I said, it's risk rated and, and uh, it's, it's a great uh, product for for the dental industry, especially with the uninsured uh, component where a lot of these are <clears throat> in most cases are not covered by insurance. So the patient has to, to figure out how to pay for it. And we're used a lot by the, the, the implant guys. Um, and I think, you know, we're just, uh, 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 we've spent a lot of time and energy. We're well funded, we're well backed. And you know, we really want to make an impact in healthcare mm -hmm. financing. Talk about our locations. Yeah. Uh, we, we are in uh, currently in Denver, Colorado. Uh, one of our offices, we're in, and in Nebraska, Lincoln and Omaha, Nebraska, we have offices and we can service loans in any one of the, all 50 states, uh, all the regulatory compliance. One of the things like when you talk about uh, practices doing this themselves or carrying these balances on their books, so they'll take the risk. You know, that model is dangerous. Sure. Because First of all, they don't know who they're loaning, you know, giving credit to. And second of all, there's all kinds of regulatory things that they can run into that they might not even be aware of. Uh, we take all the regulatory risk. So that's transferred to us. So, it, you know, we do it right. This has been well vetted by a lot of people that are in the industry. So, and they, and they can feel comfortable sending their patients to a quality, uh, pay, you know, healthcare financing organization that wants to do it right. And, and treat the patient with a, uh, a product that they can be proud of. And we'll find that, you know, what we, the other thing I'm gonna mention is when, when they do this, you'll see patients because they got a great financing uh, product and they'll also uh, get repeat business, you know, where, where the, the, the uh, uh, stickiness of that patient stays. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that works because if, if you've got a great financing plan and people need paying plans, yeah, that guy, you got to go there. So, I mean, you know, that, that's the goodwill we're trying to create amongst the, the practitioners and the patients and feel, everybody feel good about it. You know, a, a provider's oath, the first thing it is, is first do no harm. Well, that means financially too. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. they, they, they need to make sure, I mean, these guys are performing life-changing procedures in, in many cases. 
experiencing should be life changing. And we, we have a, a motto that we've created uh, about, about our company and it's, you know, we change lives without changing lives. So uh, if you think about that, you know, you can, a provider can change a person's life by getting them the healthcare treatment they need, especially in dentistry, and they can feel good. They're not changing that patient's life because they're putting them in a financial situation that they can't afford or uh, is going to change their life that way. So we try to change lives without changing lives. Love it. Love it, guys. Well, we appreciate your time. Dave and Brad, uh, again, guys, if you have any questions, do me a favor, reach out to Dave and Brad. They've given us uh, an hour of their time. As I say very often on the podcast, time is the one thing we're not going to get any more of. So we really appreciate them coming on and giving us an hour of theirs. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to contact Brad at email account hello at proceedfinance.com. It's hello at proceedfinance.com or visit the website www.proceedfinance.com slash contact hyphen us. So that is www.proceedfinance.com forward slash contact hyphen us. Or you can also email Brad directly, brad at proceedfinance.com as well as give him a phone call 402-968-1200. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant that will help you start your very own dental practice.